Live in high definition from the area's most experienced news team, this is NBC 29 HD News at 6. You do not need to be inter influencing other people um, to follow down your path of destruction. Only on NBC 29 tonight, a group of Virginia Catholics is blasting Hillary Clinton's running mate, Virginia Senator Tim Kaine. This demonstration took place outside his Sunday morning mass that Kaine usually attends in Richmond. Thanks for joining us. I'm Matt Tallhelm. About a dozen Catholics protested peacefully outside Kaine's church. They claim his voting record contradicts the Catholic faith, especially on issues of abortion and gay marriage. Alana Austin has the story you will see only on NBC. 29. He supports death and therefore he should not get votes. We don't want to just stand still. You are a kino, you are a Catholic in name only. Democratic vice presidential nominee and Senator Tim Kaine has attended St. Elizabeth's Catholic Church in Richmond for about 30 years. But now the Jesuit educated former missionary is in hot water with some fellow Catholics. Repent, change politics, or just sit out. He is not America's dad at all. If people just scratch the surface, he's really, all I can say is evil. Francis Baton, who organized Sunday morning's protest, says Kane is not in good standing to accept communion. Years ago, Kane supported more restrictions on abortion and said he personally opposed it. But now he has a 100% voting record on Planned Parenthood's 2016 congressional scorecard. Tim Kane. Quit lying that you are not pro-abortion because you are pro-abortion. While NBC 29 stayed outside the church, the director of communications for the Catholic Diocese of Richmond came over and requested we not disturb parishioners leaving the service. Deborah Cox also said Father James Arsenault of St. Elizabeth's would not be available to speak with us. Don't let Tim Kaine use us to get the Catholic vote. Bye. But last month, Arsenault appeared on NPR for an interview. He really extends a hand to, to help people and is very compassionate, approachable, available, and friendly. The church has a, a teaching with regard to uh, we're pro-life and we believe in the, that seamless garment of life. We respect uh, uh, sometimes lawmakers make difficult decisions. Parishioners coming out of church today said they loved Tim Kaine, but they were not willing to go on camera. Someone inside the church said toward the end of mass, parishioners were encouraged not to speak with the media. Kane was not in attendance at today's mass. Alana Austin, NBC 29 News. Continuing our Decision 2016 coverage tonight, Democratic presidential candidate Hillary Clinton is trying to knock out Virginia with votes. Volunteers statewide took to the streets to register new voters and discuss Clinton's platform. In Charlottesville, volunteers did some quick training before hitting the streets to start speaking with people. If I didn't try to come out and make a difference in this election because there seems to be so much at stake. Um, in my view, there's a, a serious existential threat to the country with the uh, Republican nominee. Uh, many of Rep his Re Republican colleagues uh, feel the same way. Over the next few weeks, the Clinton campaign plans to tap into student volunteers at the University of Virginia. They will continue to canvass homes and register people to vote leading up to the November election. NBC 29 covering Virginia tonight. A little boy found floating in a motel swimming pool in Doswell has died. Emergency crews say people noticed the child floating in the pool at the Days Inn Hotel. That's near King's Dominion Saturday afternoon. First responders performed CPR and rushed the boy to the VCU Medical Center where he died. The Hanover Sheriff's Office is investigating the death. A forum in Waynesboro tomorrow night will focus on the issue of drugs in the community. The Greater Augusta Prevention Partners and Skyline Drug Task Force are hosting the Taking Back Our Community Forum at Waynesboro High School. It's from 7 to 8.30 p.m. A panel of health officials, police investigators, and prosecutors will discuss recent drug trends and the new strategy law enforcement is taking to combat the problem. We are seeing more and more drug use in the area um, because we are a hub of two major interstates. We've seen a lot of drug use in the valley uh, for the years, 
But, you know, we're still coping with coming out of the grips of the recession. People are still struggling, um, and people are resorting to drugs, uh, whether it be methamphetamine, heroin, pills. Waynesboro police say Monday's event is meant to educate and inform the community. It is free and open to the public. Tonight, students at the University of Virginia are opening up about what it's like to be a student of color living on grounds and how they feel the racial climate can change. NBC 29's Madison Carter goes in depth tonight to speak with several students and share their experiences. Madison. Good evening, Matt. The State University of New York at Binghamton has come under fire after naming a training course for their RAs, Stop White People. It was a course designed to teach RAs about diversity and privilege in society, an issue that students at the University of Virginia say they've been dealing with quietly for years. What do you think will be some ways to like, I mean, because, you know, having more black people, people that look like us, that's like unity between us. But as a group, how do we go out there and unite with different people, not even white people, but like just other cultures, other cultures and make it click. This is the dilemma for students of color at the University of Virginia. They say they're living in an environment that people think is diverse, but their reality is different. I did feel like a little bit out of place just because um, most of my um, homemates, they were like the typical like white, like male, like at UVA. I kind of like felt out of place and like how I'd fit in like in the community. UVA Housing and Residence Life says it does extensive training with staff to address diversity and inclusion. Students say university leaders are missing the mark by placing the burden of racial integration on HRL staff. The programming, the like diversity program they did to bring people together, you didn't feel like that was effective? Uh, no, no. It's less of like the RA position, I guess, than the actual girls in your hall. Like the actual, like your roommates and your neighbors. If you see more black girls on your hall, I'm for me, I feel more welcomed in general, just seeing like a black girl going down the hall, or, like in the bathroom or whatever. Um, my RA can be cool, but she's not like my friend. So do these students feel the university is diverse? Yeah, we've got a ton of people from different areas. Obviously, this is a predominantly white institution. I'd say yes. I think they're trying to, but they're not like there yet. Dominique DuBose offers this explanation for the mixed response. Diverse in the sense that we're here, Diverse in the sense that we have African Americans and we have Hispanics and we have Asians, but when it comes to like numbers, not really. At the end of the day, students say the issue of diversity won't be solved simply with residence life programming. Honestly, small things, like when people talk about like microaggressions and things, like they're just like, yeah. like cultural things that other races will never understand. And it literally takes exposure. Last year, African Americans made up about 6% of the undergraduate population at UVA, and Asian Americans accounted for nearly 12%. In addition to residence life, the university has many resources for students of all color to come together and learn from one another. Okay, Madison Carter, live in our Charlottesville newsroom tonight. Thank you, Madison. People who live and work in downtown Stanton should prepare for some big crowds and traffic backups Wednesday. Mary Baldwin College is celebrating its 175th anniversary and officially launching Mary Baldwin University. The school expects as many as 1,200 people to converge on campus for the celebration Wednesday morning. Because of the crowds, the city is reserving 97 on-street parking spaces for the event. Those spaces on New, Frederick, and Academy Streets will be marked with signs for the MBU event. One lane of East Frederick Street will also be closed from 8 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. Running a golf course is a family affair in Afton. We will introduce you to the 93-year-old former golf pro who has no plans to give, give up the game he learned before going to battle in World War II. And it's going to be another comfortable overnight with low temperatures in the 60s, mostly clear. Want to watch out for some locally dense fog as we get into first thing Monday morning. Another sunny day and warm with highs around 90, but not that humid. We'll track the tropics. They're getting a little interesting coming up as well. And the undefeated UVA women's soccer team takes on Old Dominion. We will have highlights and post-game reaction a little later in sports.